Hi, grade fours. Today we are going to continue talking about division. If you haven't already watched it, there is another video that you should watch before this one where I explain what division is and give that word some meaning. This video is going to help you with your activities for today. We know that one strategy when doing math is to use manipulatives and to physically build um, whatever action or process we're doing so that we can visually see it and we can physically move things around. We are going to do that today with manipulatives at home. Let's get started with the video. I'm going to show you how to do this. One strategy that really helps you understand the action of division is to create the equation using manipulatives. Today I'm going to be using popcorn seeds. Don't you just love that sound? Um, you can use whatever you have at home, whether it's cereal, cards, dice, go outside and collect some rocks, whatever works best for you um, to practice this. Alternatively, I also will be showing you a way to do this on the computer with some online manipulatives, but let's start with the popcorn seeds. So we know... We know that division is the action of breaking a dividend into groups by the divisor. So we'd be breaking this dividend, 24, into four equal groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 24 popcorn seeds. I'm just going to make a little pile here. I'm going to count them out really quickly. There's 24. I'm going to move the rest out of the way. I'm going to take these 24 popcorn seeds and I'm going to physically move them into four equal groups. I'm going to divide it into four equal groups. Sometimes in my head I like to make an estimate of what that quotient might be, what it's going to equal to at the end. Um, and just by kind of estimating, like if I were to split it in half and half again, I think it's going to be about five or six, okay? Um, so let's start. I'm going to imagine four circles on my paper. You can draw them if you want to. I'm just not going to so I don't waste paper. So I'm just going to start sorting them. All right, so now I have four equal groups with one, two, three, four, five, six. One, double check, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. In each group. So four divides into 24 evenly. That means that there are none left over that are kind of like lonely and on their own. They each have the same amount in each group. So 24 divided by four equals six. Our quotient is six. If I flipped it and did 24 divided by six, what do you think? How many would be in each group? Let's really quickly check. Six groups this time, four in each. So you can see these numbers are interchangeable. Just like with multiplication, how you could flip those two numbers and still get the same answer. Um, you can flip the quotient and the divisor and keep the dividend the same. It'll still end up being the same. We're going to do another one. This time I wrote it a little bit differently. We did 42 divided by six. This is kind of where it looks like a fraction. And so we know this is 24. I'm gonna quickly add some more to get to 42. All right, so now I have 42. Again, if I were to kind of make an estimate of how many um, times six will divide into 42, how many groups I'll make, uh, I would think it's gonna be about six or seven, just by kind of, if I can subitize and think like, Split them in half and half again. I don't know. I think it's going to be about six or seven just by what I know about how numbers all fit together. So now the same thing. I'm going to imagine six groups and let's divide them up. Hmm. I just realized I can't add two at this end part. I was trying to add two at a time, but I don't have enough to have it divide equally. So I'm going to go back and just add one at a time. All right, so now I have six groups. I started with my uh, dividend of 42, divided it into six equal groups, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in each group. So 42 divided by six equals to seven. There's seven in each. What do you think would happen if instead I took these 42 popcorn and divided them into seven groups? I'm not gonna show you this time. I just want you to kind of make a guess, okay? All right, last one. 3 divided by 15. I wonder if that's how I read that. Hmm. I don't think so. From what I remember about the previous video, this is 15 is my dividend, and the one on the outside is my divisor. So it's actually 15 divided by 3. So I'm going to take 15. There's 8. 
15, and I'm going to divide it into three equal groups. All right, three equal groups with five in each. 15 divided by three equals five. And if we remember, that quotient gets written on the top. So if I had flipped these, 15 divided by five would equal three. So we can switch up the order. The larger number in this case, the dividend, um, is always going to stay the same. If you don't have manipulatives at home, like I did, where I use the popcorn, or you could use cereal or anything, um, where you can count out a large number of items, another option is to use this online tool, which will be linked on the website. I'm using the two color counters with numbers, and it allows you to click and drag the counters and the numbers onto this grid. So I'm gonna show you how you can use this to model division equations with manipulatives. So our first equation is going to be 16 divided by four. So our uh, dividend is 16 divided by the divisor, which is four. So I'm just gonna throw out 16 red. So that's 16. You can see I didn't really sort them or anything. I just threw them onto the grid. And now I need to sort them into four equal groups. So just like I did with the popcorn, I'm going to kind of imagine four different sections and I'm just gonna start dragging them to where I want them to go until there's none left over. The nice thing about this is you actually can only do one at a time. So it's harder to kind of make a mistake than if you're doing uh, counting by twos or threes like I did with the popcorn. All right, so now I have four groups. I divided 16 red counters into four equal groups, and there's four in each group. So I know that 16 divided by four is equal to four. I know that as well, I can double check because four times by four is equal to 16. When I reverse the equation and kind of um, flip it, we know that multiplication is the inverse of division, the opposite. Um, so that's one way to kind of double check your work. The next equation we're going to do is 18 divided by three. So I already have 16, so I'm just going to throw out two more. Um, and I don't really need to reorganize much. I'm just going to move these so that there are only three groups now. Now I have three groups with six in each. So our quotient can't be four. That wouldn't make sense. We have 18 red counters that we divided into three equal groups. Therefore, our quotient is one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, you can double check that is six times three, 18. We know that it is really good way to check. The last one we're going to do is 20 divided by five. This time I'm going to make it as um, almost like an array. So I'm gonna make five columns with my 20 counters. If you didn't see, I added two more counters to the 18 to make it 20. So this is actually an array that's representing 20 divided by five. So I have 20 red counters and it's divided into five columns. And I can tell that the, what the quotient is by looking at how many rows I have and I have four rows. So 20 divided by five equals four. We also know that this could be represented with the equation five times by four is equal to 20. So you can really see when you make it an array um, or those equal groups that they're the inverse of each other, the multiplication and division. Because when I see this, I think, well, five times by four is equal to um, 20. But then if I divide the 20 into those five equal groups, those columns, then I have four rows. Um, so again, if you would rather use this online tool, it's a really great one to have manipulatives online for all of your math work. 
All right, grade fours, your job today is going to be to practice what I've been showing you in this video. Practice the action of division with manipulatives that you have at home. Bonus points for those of you who come up with an interesting manipulative. I'm just kidding, but it makes it more fun. So there are two sets of questions posted on Seesaw on your activity titled, Let's Divide. All you have to do is practice one of those sets, pick the one that fits you best, and then post a video of you doing one of those equations so that I can see how you can divide up a set of items. Then post that video to that assignment, Let's Divide. All right, are you ready? Three, two, one, go!